production is exactly the same as the first preview we played in London 26 and a half years ago. Yeah. But thank God it's better than the dress rehearsal. <laughs> now, listen, uh, I have been a producer nearly 50 years, and I can tell you, in my dreams, I never thought I would be sharing the stage with a theatrical legend like Hal, let alone being here for such a historic occasion of such a wonderful show, becoming and taking the great honour in this amazing city of great musicals of becoming the longest running Broadway musical. It's extraordinary for me. Um, it's extraordinary for me not just for the show, but for somebody who wanted to be a producer since I was eight. I had two heroes. They were David Merrick and they were Hal Prince, who is the only man I know who has had two careers. Hal Prince is one of our greatest directors. She is also one of the greatest producers. And in Her Majesty's Theatre, where I was growing up, I saw West Side Story, Hal Prince. I saw Figure on the Roof, Hal Prince. I, I saw Company, the very first American company I ever saw. It was just amazing. I owe so much inspiration to you. Cameron, and it is thrilling to be here. It's worth mentioning we both started as stage man. Yes. <laughs> He's very nice to the stage manager on the way up. You'll never know what he's doing. Now, you know, on a day like this, um, you, I, it's a bit rare chance to say thank you. Uh, and I have to say two very quick thank yous. One to the Schubert organization, who have been my friend and family. Indeed, Bernie Jacobs and Betty put me in the first Schubert house when I was a penniless producer. It was their own house. And I don't like to say this to, to Bob and Phil, but they didn't charge me any rent. Um, <laughs> I am so grateful to Bernie and to Jerry, who sadly aren't here, though funnily enough, Bernie did have an idea that he might, the show might outlive him. Because he's, I never, I remember doing the break figure, which he was normally so meticulous about. He went, don't have to worry about that, he said. It'll never trouble us in our lifetime. So, only Bernie knew, he knew everything. And what a wonderful man he was. And of course, Alan Wasser, my general manager. Thank you so much. But there are people who are not here, and the most important person who's not here is the man who gave us the music of the night, Andrew. Uh, I spoke to him a few hours ago. He has just had a rather serious back operation and literally just got home today. He sends all his love to all of you and everybody in the company. He's so sad, I mean really up sad that he's not here tonight. And it is the one tinge of real unhappiness in this evening of joy for me because we started this together for fun and he, this is just, it never happened without him. He is just, the most, it was the greatest collaboration we've ever had. So we will definitely give him a great toast tonight and get that soon. <laughs> and of course, the other great person who is not here is Maria Bielsen. Uh, you introduced me to Maria, and uh, she was. Uh, an impeccable artist. We worked over a year on the production, uh, m countless trips, thanks to you, across the Atlantic, <laughs> and, uh, and suddenly it became time to share the whole show and present it, and uh, I said to her, but we don't have any costumes. And she said, oh, don't worry about those. I designed 50 a day. <laughs> and she did. True to her word, she designed all these costumes in about 10 days. And they're exactly what you see on the There's another lady, there's another lady we're missing. And uh, I actually talked to her early this evening. And that's Jillian Lynn. <laughs> Thank you.
one of my oldest friends all my life. She's a true, another true legend. And uh, knowing Jimmy, there's only one thing that would stop her being here. And that is the fact that she's actually driving people through a tech in London <laughs> and doing a new show, Jerry Herman's. For us in London, Dear World, she's doing a production of Dear World in London, which is simply wonderful. I think with Betty Buckley, which is fantastic. So she's asked me to just read this to you. For the last 25 years, I've had the joy of being in New York to stage all our special celebration occasions. This time I cannot, as I'm directing Jerry Herman's Dear World in London, we're about to open. The years have flown by, and I have loved every minute of the work spent with the New York company of Phantom. Long may this beautiful show continue to thrive. With love and proud congratulations to everyone, Gillian. Thank you. <laughs> but we do have one of our creative team. We aren't the last two standing. <laughs> that is our amazing lighting designer, ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Bridge. someone who's missing, and we wish we're here, and that's uh, Michael Crawford. <laughs> Dear Hal, just a note to congratulate everyone on this wonderful 25th anniversary of Phantom. Hal, I remember the night before we opened, when you told me that my life would change from that day on, and sure enough, I had the most exciting period of my career during that first year at Phantom working with a great company, crew, and orchestra. So many wonderful memories. My love to you all, and to all the subsequent company members through the years. Most of all, thanks, Hal, for being a great captain of the team. With love, Michael Cook. We do have to have one other special person here tonight. Um, who you know as the creator of the role of Christine, Sarah Bell. Let me say, she's, she, her role in this show is far more than just being the creator of the original role, because um, the truth was, when Andrew rang me up originally in 1984, he said, why don't we just produce The Phantom of the Opera? He, hadn't, he wasn't really intending to write it at that point in his life. He was, possibly going to write a few extra tunes and we were going to find existing material and do it. And we spent several months doing that. And at that point, he was married to Sarah. And we had a very good time enjoying and exploring, exploring the piece. But he was also finding out what an extraordinary voice Sarah had. And partly he was writing a requiem for his father, who had just recently died. And I remember he rang me up on Christmas Eve uh, and as I lived very near him in Sydmonton, and said, Well, I come over, he wanted to talk to me. And I came over. I think we went to the cellar because I have no recollection of how I drove back. But, <laughs> but the local priest did. I collided with the vicar in a windy back street and wrote off his car. He said, I had a vision of heaven last night. I now realize it's the smoke coming out of my radiator. Um, and the first production cost for Phantom of the Opera was indeed replacing the vicar's car. <laughs> the important thing is, Andrew said, no, I realise I must, I want to write Phantom of the Opera. So that is very much thank to Sarah. The next thing that she did was had a marvellous coincidence going into her singing teacher, and she overheard her Michael Crawford being given a lesson. We were at the time still casting the role. And she discovered that Michael had been a chorister, mentioned it to Andrew, and we ended up with Michael Crawford as our leading man. So, I think that there's no doubt that Sarah was her muse, was the show's muse, Andrew's muse, and without her, we would not have the music of the night as we know it tonight. She has been, and always will be, his angel of music.
coming out of outer space. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I've been I read to a lot of theatre lately, but unfortunately, operating theatres is not a oh, you know, so stupid bad back, which is why I'm not in New York tonight. But uh, apparently, Cameron's got a bad back, and that was his excuse for not going to the Golden Globes. So have you heard? Have you ever noticed, Sarah, that whenever you've got something that's the matter with you, and you say that I've got a bad back or something like that? Everybody else has got the same problem. <laughs> so I'm going to have the musical back pain. Do you realise this is the first interview that we've done together since I think we were married? I think so. Actually, it's lovely. Do and you I want to I really, yes. Start a room, I'm sure. I'm a Macintosh show. Um, wanted very much for me to do, but what I was to work with Anna J. Lerner. And allegedly, Anna J. Lerner's last line uh, before he died, sadly, uh, was This is the way to go with Moang Morphine. And I know I'm going to have an awful lot of uh, morphine in me tomorrow, but can, can, uh, can you make sure that the doctors get a bit of Moang around there as well? <laughs> Sarah, you can take care of that, can't you? Yes, I can do that because I'll be there. So um, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're just giving out and we're just components to really what the, the composer person that came up with the vision, which is you. Okay. And without that, it, none of it And, and, and without so. the wonderful Alfred's production, of course, Ginny Lynn, who well, apparently yes. also can't be here, she has not a bad back. Alfred should still go, great Lewis and Charlie yes. Hart. So we thank Cameron, we thank Ginny, and we thank Hal. We have to thank, of course, the wonderful Marie Bielsen. Yes, who's certainly not with us, but she was an amazing, amazing designer, and well, both of us, and I spent many happy hours well, with her, helping well, work things out. We always forget to thank all the backstage people and the crew and the orchestra and yes. everybody who makes it possible, because it's the unsung people who actually make these shows happen. Yes, and you know, everyone that have worked you know, with the Phantom for years, I mean, for me it's wonderful, because when I being there right at the beginning and then seeing performers go on and take on that role and bring their own thing to it and their own wonderment to it is, is a joy for me. It's like every time I go into Sea Phantom, it's like watching this beautiful jewel, which is timeless. For me, because I can't be here, and I know Sarah will talk tomorrow as well, but i just like to say I'm missing this. I really wouldn't have missed this for the world, but, uh, and I, I'm really, really sad not to be with you all. But, um, it's just marvellous that Sarah could be with me today, and uh, we could both send our, our the work, which we would have done anyway, but uh, that we could, we could do it this way. And I hope you have a most fantastic evening, and get let somebody else, somebody will bore you with the statistics of the show, and how long it's run, and all those sort of things. But it's not going to be me, because I've forgotten them. <laughs> It's a relief. I feel so happy and privileged to have been a part of all of this. Privileged to have worked with Hal, with Cameron, with Maria, Maria, and um, Ginny, and all of the performers that I have worked with, and everyone backstage, and of course Michael as well. And um, I, I just am very happy and privileged to, of course, have known and loved and worked with Andrew, who of course, without him and his wonderful composing and his inception of all of this, 
none of us, I suppose, would be standing here tonight. So, and of course, to thank you, the audience, who have given us all so much support throughout the years. Thank you very much. <laughs>
loved, we say thank you so much for coming, but this being a very, very special, yet yeah, unique night, we couldn't let you go without a little extra music of the night. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Please welcome John Owen Jones, who has played the Phantom of the United States Theatre in London in 2009. From Sweden, Peter Yoa, who most recently played the Phantom in London and will join the Broadway production this spring for a season. Ramin Karimlu, who played the Phantom in the 25th anniversary production of the Royal Albert Hall. Tonight's Phantom, Hugh Panara. And finally, this evening's Christine, Sierra Vargas.
Your darkest dreams, but your thoughts are. 